Ah, what's up guys? Welcome to Poor Man Mods. Today we are definitely doing a Poor Man Mod. I made a deal with Tony. Tony's been bugging me for well over a year now to do a header on this car. And over a year ago, maybe two, I did have a header for the car. And then I decided not to put it on and I sold it and he was super bummed out. And I've heard a lot of sound clips of these cars with a header and they are great sounding, but it's obnoxious and stupid loud, so I decided not to go that route, but Tony has been on my ass for at least the past year. And about two weeks ago, I said, you know what, Tony? Fine. If you buy me a header, I'll install it. And here it is. He went on eBay and bought the cheapest header that he could find for the IS300. It's actually not that bad looking. I think he said he paid $78 for this thing. $78 and uh, we're gonna see how it sounds and see how it doesn't install well see you know if it fits or not um, I do have a fully modified exhaust in this car already uh, I have the Megan midpipe and butchered exhaust all the way back so this should made up to the Megan midpipe this isn't going to be a how-to it's a pretty straightforward install um, but this will just be an overview of me installing it and then we'll see how it sounds at the end. So let's get started. Okay. Disconnected the header from the mid pipe down below. Those bolts are only like a year old and they were really, really gone. Uh, move this intake pipe out of the way. And I'm not going to try to remove any of the O2 sensors on the car. It's definitely gonna be easier to remove them with the manifold off the car. So so I don't mix up any of the connectors. I'm gonna mark them with some paint marker. You probably can't see this, but just gonna try to, uh, you know, keep them organized and not mix them up. These nuts are definitely gonna need all the penetrating lube that they can get. This is their third coat. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, wow. Holy crap. All right, now I'm scared. I'm gonna put this one back on just to uh, put pressure on the flange to make getting the last one off easy. Last nut is a little bit tricky. I've got a two inch extension on a deep 14 millimeter socket. The half inch sockets were a little bit too big to maneuver back there, so I got three eighths. Let's see if, see if it'll work. Oh yeah. I think I just lost my, my exhaust down there. All right, there's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Uh, looks like it should work. Now we'll get the O2 sensors off the old one. Now my one tip for this, Anytime you go to remove an O2 sensor, I don't care if it's got one mile on it, a hundred thousand or a million, you're gonna wanna torch it. It is very common for you to damage the exhaust or the O2 sensor trying to remove an O2 sensor. They go through a lot of heat cycles, they get bound up and they can strip the threads off the sensor or the exhaust. Always torch it before removing it. Even if you don't think you need to, it's not worth the risk. Using the fuel of the torch, you're gonna to spend a couple pennies torching it where you could potentially spend hundreds to replace it. I mean, right here, we got three sensors. That is well over $300 in sensors that we could possibly damage if we didn't torch it. So I am going to torch it. You wanna to torch the bung of the exhaust that the sensor threads into. 
You don't want to torch the sensor itself. You're gonna torch the O2 sensor bung. Once you get it nice and hot, then you can break it free. But it is well worth the time and money to torch it every time, no matter how new that sensor is. Trust me. We're gonna use an O2 sensor socket. Look at that. It is always worth it to torch these. All right, transferred over the O2 sensors. I will be reusing the factory exhaust manifold gasket, not the one that came with this. Let's see if there's any fitment issues. It definitely seems like the two runners, or the two banks, are too close together. I can get it over the back studs, it doesn't want to go over the front. Ugh. Awesome. I think I got it started on the studs. That's what $78 gets you. I think I've got all the threads showing. Let's see if I can draw it on with all the nuts. Holy crap, so it's in, it actually wasn't that bad. Uh, let's put it on the ground and see how it sounds. Now that's how you properly film an exhaust clip. You don't put the freaking microphone and camera in the freaking tailpipe. That's how you get a good, solid audio clip. Car sounds pretty ridiculous. It's good, but it's ridiculous. Uh, I'm gonna see how it drives on the road and maybe I'll add a resonator or a muffler to even it out. It's probably a little bit too loud for my liking, but it's, it's pretty gnarly. All right, so we're gonna do a couple drive-by clips right here and uh, some revving. I did add a small 12-inch muffler to the car. There's still a slight rattle when I rev it. I'm not exactly sure where the rattle is coming from. It makes it sound really raspy. Um, not sure where that's coming from though, but the muffler did help to make it sound a lot better. So we're gonna do a couple drive-by clips and see how it sounds. <laughs> So I am not in love with the sound. I guess that's what you get when you put a header on an IS300 or a non-turbo 2JZ. Um, and I did have some fitment issues later on that I discovered. The one runner was resting on the engine mount and that was adding some vibration to the cabin. 
um, and that's why I think it was hard to get the header on. So what I did to correct it, I just jammed a pry bar in there and hammered it in and that kind of smashed the pipe up a little bit and made it clear the engine mount. So I'd recommend if you go this route and install this cheap header, check that clearance first and if it does hit, uh, hit it with a hammer before you put it on. Uh, just to dent it a little bit or you can file down the engine mount. Um, it definitely increased the power. The car is a lot snappier. It's more awake. Uh, I can definitely feel it in the butt dyno, but the sound just isn't isn't there. It does not sound good. Really, the only way to make a non-turbo 2JZ sound good, in my opinion, is to not have a header on it or to add a turbo. Um, I've never been a big fan of the headers on these. That's why I sold it originally, but I uh, fulfilled my promise to Tony by installing it since he bought it for me and the big plus side is i was able to sell my stock manifold for 300 dollars. so i got a free header gained 10 horsepower so it made the car sound like crap but i got 300 dollars in my pocket so i would consider this a win um yeah and also i don't have any check engine lights for po420s because i have uh, mini catalytic converters on my downstream o2 sensors now clearly those are for off-road use only on a track I would never ever use them on the street. Uh, those are definitely just to only turn the check engine light off for when I'm on the track. So, uh, for 70 bucks or however much you spent on this header, I guess it's worth it. I mean, you can make your money back after selling your stock manifold, but I'm just not a fan of the sound. I know some people are, but I don't, I'm not a fan of the sound. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope maybe you learned something. Uh, yeah, you can decide for yourself if you want to put a header on your IS-300. Uh, it's totally up to you. So, see you next time. Bye.